This is Phil at BOE Fabrication. We're going to go over how to set up your data logging tables if you've got an EFI 1.2 or X2 for the Lotus Elise or Exige. Um, first, you open up the editor software in Power to Win. Um, and by the way, this only works if you have the data logging feature added to the ECU or you purchased it as such. Uh, to set up the data logger, you go to the config up here and you hit logging table. You could also just strike the keys Control L. First we set up enable. The enable is when the ECU automatically turns on your logger or turns off your logger so you don't actually have to hit a button. I set the RPM constraints to 2000, turns it on. Once it drops below 1800, it turns it off. Um, I also check cyclic logging over here. That simply means that if we've filled up the buffer, it'll start recording over old information. Uh, that way we're continuing to keep the recording going for as long as we're on the track. Channels. Uh, we're not using this for vehicle dynamics, this is only for engine analysis. So, we, we don't have a GPS sensor hooked up to this car, so we want to sh uh, shut off things that are related to lap counting and things of that nature. Uh, leave on your distance, turn off your lap count and lap time. The way you select things is by highlighting it and then double click. It'll allow you to hit the sample rate, and in which case we want to just shut these off. So distance, on at 10. Lap count, lap time, shut them off. Um, down here are the channels that we want to watch at, at the recommended frequency. And uh, so in this case, RPM will watch at 50 times a second. Less critical items we watch less frequently. So battery at 5. Throttle, air box, fuel pressure, oil pressure. Oil pressure is important and fuel pressure is important only if you have aftermarket fuel pressure and oil pressure monitoring sensors. If you don't have those two items, it's probably not as critical that you watch them. Um, the lateral G, fuel temp, not interested, air temp, uh, we do want to watch that. We don't have to watch it all that frequently as it doesn't change very often, so we could probably just make this 5 hertz as opposed to even 10. Water temp, again, doesn't change very fast, so you don't have to watch it as often. Oil temp, if you have an oil temp sensor, I'd say go ahead and turn that on. Again, doesn't need to be watched too frequently because it doesn't, temps don't change that fast. Uh, ECU temp, again, less frequent. Lambda 1. Lambda 2, this is very important uh, distinction between the two boxes, 1.2 and X2. If you're, watch, if you're using a EFI X2, that's the newer of the EFI boxes, and it will say X2 in big white letters on the front of the box, then you want to monitor Lambda 1 at 50 hertz. If you have an EFI 1.2, which is the older legacy boxes, they don't have no markings on the outside to indicate that they are 1.2 or that they're not an X2, um, it's you want to watch lambda 2 instead of lambda 1 at 50 hertz. What this is is the actual air fuel ratio that the ECU is monitoring. Again, X2, watch lambda 1 at 50, 1 1.2, the old legacy boxes, watch lambda 2 at 50. Obviously, in this case, I'm watching an X2 box. The next batch here you can leave off, off all the way down to here to duty 1, duty 2. This is for analysis of. Uh, some of the cam motors. If you have wheel speed hooked up to the car, which is very common on X2, uh, not real common on 1.2, you can watch those, again, at a less hurt rate. Um, fuel used is not a very important feature for most of us, um, and it's also something that has to be reset frequently, so I would recommend turning it off unless you're an advanced user. Injection, spark advance, lambda 1 correction, lambda set point, all extremely important. EGTs, most of you won't have that turned on. Turn on all your flags here, just at 5. Uh, most are not running a knock sensor, but if you are, be sure to turn that on. Um, if you have to ask, then you know you're not running it, because it's an extra feature. Uh, cam 1, cam 2 can be left off. Sync position will tell us where our cam is, and again, watch at 50. Um, going through here, all these items can be left off. If you're running drive-by-wire, Go ahead and turn on your pedal position to 50. If you're not running drive-by-wire, forget about it. And all the way down here to Vano set point, that's the next thing that you want to have on. And basically, you can leave the other items off. Once you're done, hit OK. Great. Then you go up to the logger up here where it says Send Config. Also, you can strike the keys Control-C. This computer is not currently hooked up to a computer so if I try to hit uh, if I try to send the config it won't allow me to do it one thing you want to look at before you try to send the config and the config is what we just put together 
is make sure that you're working online. Obviously, again, I'm not hooked up to a computer, so I'm offline. And then also make uh, sure that you're working online over here. You want this to say to be dark green, just like this green over here. If it says work offline, that means you are currently working offline. So you need this on and you need this off. Then go over here and hit control C. And again, I'm not connected to the ECU, so it won't let me. But in your case, it'll upload. You'll see a little working bar that'll come across and it'll probably last for about 30 seconds. Then you're done. Your data logger is set up. Once you come in off the track, you want to go over here uh, and hit download logger, which is also just control D. As I alluded to earlier, when I get in off the track, I go grab my laptop, I immediately come in, I hit control, I plug it in, I hit control D. The key needs to be on, you need to be working offline, and then you can hit control D. It will take about five minutes to download an entire uh, an, uh, full buffer uh, out of the computer. At that point, you're done, and you can go to Power to Win Analysis Program and start looking at your data. Hopefully this was helpful. Thanks.